from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE coverage of IBM Think 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Ricardo Ferlenza is here with me. He's the Global Managing Director for IBM at Citigroup. Ricardo, great to see you. Thank you for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for, for having me. You're the uh, team leader for Citigroup, managing director. A um, lot going on in the world of finance, fintech, technology, scale, transformation. All this is happening, always a leading edge indicator. Give us your perspective on the market right now on, the, on that vertical and in general, because um, there's so much scale, there's so much machine learning, so much going on, so much competitive advantages. Give us an overview of the industry, how you see them. So John, I've had the good fortune of working essentially around the world. I worked in Europe, in Asia, in Australia, back here in uh, North America. And I'll tell you what, there are some, some uh, uh, dynamics that are specific to a market. There are also a lot of common threads, right? You know, a lot of common threads, right? So as you know, my industry, financial services, is in the middle of a uh, great disruption, right? From payments to, uh, to uh, uh, global wealth, to understanding exactly how to reposition yourself uh, as, a, as, a, as a startup oftentimes, looking not to be disintermediated by many of the fintechs. I have found that many financial institutions are very adept at changing the way they operate, a lot more nimble than they have been in the past, and have found ways to incorporate a lot of the techniques that some of the fintechs uh, uh, operate with. So they all have shark tanks, they all find a way to uh, uh, progressed investments that they get to a point of uh, uh, failing fast, right? More are, some are more adept than others, but for the most part, I'd say that everyone in the market is looking to beef up their, their core competences. And you know, the financial um, industry has never been shy of using technology ever. They've always poured it on. They always wanted to get more edge. Um, what's your, what is the edge now in the industry for um, financial and, and in general, businesses who are learning how to be agile, what's the edge? I think the edge is really in finding a way to be ambidextrous, right? Because in many respects, uh, you do want to hold on to a franchise to what got you to a level of success. It's oftentimes, it's in the case of my client, has stood in good stead for more than a hundred years, right? So you don't want to let that go, but you also want to grow a new set of skills and grow competences that they need to take you into the future. I have found that in many respects, uh, Many of my clients uh, are, remind me of what Lou Gerson once said, maybe 20 or 25 years ago, our former CEO and chairman, who said the last thing that IBM needs is a strategy. And in fact, I think that many of our financial institutions uh, don't need a strategy. They just need the competences to innovate and execute at scale. And that's a lot easier said than done. Carter, I want to get your perspective before we move on to some of the initiatives and work at Citi, which is probably compelling, but I want to get your expert opinion on question that comes up all the time with customers and that are going post pandemic and looking at growth strategies. The idea of the unit economics of their business models tend to change with more data, more digital acceleration. Is there any observations that you could share for leaders who are looking to get that financial mindset or of, of how the business is changing with whether it's KPIs or uh, business models because at the end of the day, the financial upside of what we're seeing with digital is pretty significant. The economics uh, are seem to be a real game changer on these. A lot of these conversations are about acceleration, but also the results are business results or money. Uh, absolutely, John. As a matter of fact, uh, I'd argue that uh, uh, while it's true that the common uh, themes are many and that several of our financial institutions are growing a skill in, in uh, in uh, um, uh, approaching problems in a different fashion. It's also true that there's been a lot of redistribution of wealth across financial enterprises, right? So it's not lost on all of us, right? That, uh, that just if you look at market capitalization of leading financial institutions around the world, they've really gone all over the place with uh, clear winners in several sectors, right? In Asia and Europe, as well as here in North America. So what I'd argue is that uh, while I think we're all tired of hearing that data is the new oil, right? It's also true that we need to find a way to finally harness the power of it, right? And that's what I think uh, IBM is uh, more uh, more adept at, right? I'd argue that many of the uh, the common threads that we've seen across uh, financial institutions and back to the to the uh, measures of success that you would indicate a minute ago are really around cloud, right? 
around data and around digital transformation, right? So our approach to cloud, for instance, is unique, right? While there are a number of uh, uh, very competent hyperscalers, we've taken a different approach to it, right? We've taken an approach that's more gone after other highly specialized regulated workloads, right? Or gone after the layer that allows you to port uh, application seamlessly uh, based on regulation, cost, and competition across multiple platforms, right? So this hybrid concept has really been at the center of our cloud strategy. And that's the one that in my mind is, uh, is delivering our clients the greatest value. I'll tell you what, I think one client told me once uh, after hearing our hybrid story, that while there were many cloud providers, there wasn't anyone that could help them quite as much as IBM dealing with their legacy. And in all candor, I think it's fair to say that legacy is here to stay well past our investment horizon, right? Yeah. So that level of um, self-awareness, I think, uh, uh, ended up, uh, uh, really forming our collaborations for years to come. You know, I'm a big believer and I've reported this and certainly talked to Arvin when, um, he was on the cube about this. Microservices, containers, Kubernetes, these kinds of new technologies really allow for legacy to integrate well into the new modern era of computing in hybrid cloud. So totally agree. And that is really key tailwind for, for innovation and these transformations. So I have to ask you, Ricardo, what's going on at City and IBM? Tell us, take us through some things that you're working on, some of the exciting projects that you're driving. So the disclaimer is that I started this role three months ago. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try to do my, my team proud here, but what I'll tell you is that the teams we talked about are alive and well at City, right? So on the cloud front, we are doing exactly that. We're focusing on, on, on being uh, City's partner on the hybrid cloud deployment, acknowledging that uh, uh, hybrid cloud is, a, is an ecosystem of participants, right? Acknowledging that IBM's uh, dominance in on-prem computing will go through a very different phase going forward. We not only are comfortable with it, but we are trying to accelerate its deployment, right? So you mentioned Kubernetes, uh, you mentioned uh, containers, uh, hence our Red Hat acquisition, right? Which has been central to the collaboration that we've, uh, that we've established at City and we're looking to grow. I'm also going to uh, go back to data and I will tell you that, uh, uh, as you know, uh, uh, City is in the midst of a transformation journey of their own right. It's also in the middle of a, a regulatory uh, uh, challenge that's uh, second to none, right? With, uh, with the OCC findings that then led to a, a fine and a remediation plan that the bank has put in place over the past few months. With that in mind, we are looking to help the bank make a, make of a good crisis, make the most of a good crisis, right? And so we're helping, for instance, Mark Sabino, the head of innovation at City, find ways to uh, infuse AI into their internal audit practices. Doing that is just smart business. It results in much better outcome, at a lower cost, and it's something that can scale. Because as I was saying before, oftentimes our solutions uh, uh, have lacked the ability to scale to really keep up with client domain. Ricardo, the relationship between IBM and City has been longstanding. I believe I read somewhere you're celebrating 100 year partnership uh, is that true? If so, I mean, it's a huge milestone. What's the, take us through the, the history and where this is going as a partnership. I've heard as a matter of fact, as I, as I first came on board, that in fact, our companies have been at it for more than hundred years. And someone showed me an actual document hundred years old. that was proof, proof positive of that. So I'll tell you, I know that our firms will be at it again, hundred years from now. I will probably not be here to toast to it but I'm certain that they will continue to collaborate and for as long as this is my responsibility, I'll do whatever I can to help it continue to grow. We're really going to focus on three things. I spoke about hybrid cloud. We really also want to be the, uh, the partner as the bank transforms its operations, right? And infuse in it our AI and process automation skills and capabilities. I think if we do that, we will continue to collaborate and we'll continue to have our partnership really rests on the two pillars that is always independent, which are really innovation and trust. Great commentary, great uh, an account that you're leading, probably a great team behind it. How many people are on this team? Must be pretty massive. And I'd love to see that document, by the way. Was it a memo? Was that typewritten? Was it handwritten? Well, you know, was it a it PO? Was, it was a typewritten document and I get your copy of it. 
Uh, it's so historic. I love those historic. I love the IBM culture, longstanding relationships. Final question for you. You've been in the industry for a while. You've seen many waves of innovation. If you're talking to a customer, your friend or, or colleague and had asked you, Ricardo, why is this wave so big and so important? What would you tell them? John, I think at the heart of this transformation, uh, the evolution, the wave as you called it, is not the introduction of new products, the in introduction of new processes, but entire new value chains that are being established by players that in many cases need, need each other to coexist. This has hardly ever been the case in the past. I think IBM will form a great example of it, right? And so I do think that this is far more disruptive than what we have witnessed uh, in years past, and I can't wait to get, get in it and, and do my part to, to lead, lead us through it. Ricardo, great insight, totally agree. This is a time of open collaboration and ecosystem. You're seeing an ecosystem and network effect where people are integrating together in this new connected, distributed economy, global economy. Thank you for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, Ricardo, for Lenza, Global Managing Director for IBM at Citigroup. This is theCUBE coverage of IBM Think 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.